If you're a weather enthusiast like me, you probably like to track severe weather outbreaks on radar, but that might be hard to do if you don't understand what you're looking at. To assist you on your weather journey, I'll be covering different things you'll see on radar. Base Reflectivity If you've ever watched a weather forecast on the news or looked at a radar app, you've probably seen base reflectivity. Base reflectivity shows how heavy rain is in an area, with greens and blues being light precipitation and oranges and reds being heavier precipitation. Radars can calculate the amount of rain in a storm by sending out radio waves, and if the waves hit something, they'll be bounced back, telling the radar that something is out there. When rain is heavier in a storm, the falling raindrops are more densely packed, leading to more radio waves being bounced back to the radar. Reds on radar don't always indicate a strong storm, as storms with very heavy rain don't always produce lightning, hail, or tornadoes. When thunderstorms have less rain than normal, they are called low precipitation thunderstorms. This type of thunderstorm is great for viewing tornadoes due to very little rain obscuring your view. Base reflectivity doesn't just show rain, it also shows hail and debris. Hail is often represented on radar with pinks, purples, and sometimes white. The way hail is detected on radar is pretty much the same way rain is detected. When hail is especially prevalent in a storm, the waves from the radar can hit the hail and be reflected to the ground and then back up to the hail, which then reflects the waves back to the radar. This is known as a three-body scatter spike, or more commonly called a hail spike. When strong tornadoes impact structures and throw their debris in the air, that debris can show up on radar. This is usually seen with correlation coefficient, more on that later, but can also be seen with reflectivity. Similar to hail, due to the size and density of the debris, more radio waves are reflected. This sometimes makes the tornado apparent on radar due to the debris showing up in reds, pinks, and rarely whites. Debris can also very rarely cause debris spikes. These spikes follow the same principle as hail spikes. A good example of a debris spike is from the 2021 Mayfield EF4, which lofted large amounts of wreckage and thus caused a prominent debris spike. Velocity Velocity on radar is an easy way to tell if a storm is currently rotating. The greens represent winds blowing towards the radar, and reds represent winds blowing away from the radar. Remember, just because reds are next to greens doesn't always mean a tornado is on the ground. Velocity also sometimes shows purple, which means the radar can't tell what the wind speeds are in that area due to range folding. If the velocity colors are brighter, that usually means that wind speeds are higher, and if the wind is blowing fast enough, it can even show up in purples, blues, and browns. Since a lot of people only use reflectivity to gauge whether or not they should seek shelter from an approaching storm, they might be caught off guard as high winds on the leading edge of the storm could reach them before the rain. Correlation Coefficient In a normal storm, the falling raindrops are usually pretty similar in size, and would have a high correlation coefficient, or CC. This shows up as red and pink on radar. If hail in a storm is big enough, it might cause the CC to drop a little, since the size of the rain and hail varies more. If a tornado is strong enough, it might loft large objects high enough to intersect the radar beam. This causes a much higher variation in the sizes of objects in the storm. This causes a very noticeable CC drop consisting of blues and blacks. These drops don't have to always happen in areas with a lot of structures and subsequent debris. Take a look at this screenshot from a tornado in Oklahoma earlier this year. Judging by the CC drop, you might assume that a lot of buildings were impacted and had their debris lofted high up, but if you take a look at satellite imagery of where the tornado hit, you'll see while there are a few structures, there's mainly just open fields. The reason this tornado still caused such a defined CC drop is because it lofted numerous trees. Hook Echo When a storm begins rotating, rain and air might begin to be sucked into the circulation, causing the storm to curve forming a hook echo. These echoes usually signify tornadic potential in a storm, but don't always. Look at this storm. Despite the fact that a hook shape appears evident, there is no rotation in this storm and a tornado warning was not issued. Now look at this storm. Since it doesn't have a hook shape, one can think it won't produce a tornado. But looking at velocity, we can see that there is in fact rotation in this storm. If a storm with a hook echo is producing a tornado, that storm will be located in the area at the end of the hook. Sometimes, storms can have such rapid rotation that the hook echo can form a spiral shape or a vortex hole. Supercells have two storm modes, discrete and linear. Discrete storm mode is when supercells are by themselves and isolated. 
In linear storm mode is when storms form a line and can have embedded supercells within. When storm mode is linear, supercells might be tough to spot on reflectivity, as rain from other storms might hide a hook echo. Bow echo. When a line of storms has high winds, the winds can push the rain within the storms outward, causing a bow shape called a bowing line segment, or bow echo. Bow echoes cause severe winds and occasionally tornadoes. Sometimes, bow echoes can last a while and transition into a derecho. Derechos are basically bow echoes but stronger. To be classified as a derecho, a bowing line segment has to travel at least 400 miles and have a wind gust of at least 58 miles per hour for most of its life. Derechos are very fast moving and can travel hundreds of miles in a few hours. Some derechos can have forward speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour and can even spawn tornadoes, such as the December 2021 Midwest derecho, which caused an astonishing 120 tornadoes, including 33 EF2s. The four types of derechos are serial, which is usually associated with a very deep low, progressive, which may travel for hundreds of miles along a stationary front, hybrid, which is similar to serial and progressive, and low dew point, which is pretty self explanatory and occurs in an area with comparatively low dew points. Severe weather warnings. Severe weather warnings are represented as colored polygons on radar and warn the public about severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, flash floods, and more. For a severe thunderstorm warning to be issued, a storm has to have winds of at least 58 miles per hour or hail one inch or larger. These warnings are usually shown on radar as yellow. If a storm has winds over 70 miles per hour or 1.75 inch hail, it will receive a severe thunderstorm warning with a considerable threat tag. If the thunderstorm has winds over 80 miles per hour or 2.75 inch hail, a destructive threat tag will be added. If a tornado appears possible on radar but hasn't been confirmed, a radar indicated tornado warning will be issued. But if a tornado has been reported for the storm, an observed tornado warning will be issued. Tornado warnings are usually shown as red on radar. When a confirmed tornado is likely capable of producing severe damage, a particularly dangerous situation, or PDS tornado warning will be issued with a considerable threat tag. These warnings are usually pink. If a tornado has been confirmed to be violent and is imminent in a highly populated area, a tornado emergency, or TOR-E, will be issued with a catastrophic threat tag. TOR-E's are typically shown as pink and black. Tornado emergencies are very rare and have only been issued 203 times in the 25 years they've been in use. If heavy rain is expected in a short period of time or dam breaks, a flash flood warning will likely be issued. Such warnings are often shown as green. Flash flood warnings are used when life-threatening flooding is imminent or occurring. Flash floods can be indicated by radar, stream gauges, or storm spotters. If a flash flood poses a severe threat to human life and catastrophic damage is ongoing or will happen soon, a flash flood emergency will be issued. I hope you enjoyed this video and please consider subscribing so you can learn more about weather phenomena on my channel.